So we uh, at our school have been talking for quite a long time about how do we meet the children of today so that as they become the adults of tomorrow, the education that they have nourishes them, educates them, gives them the skills uh, and it, it practically as well as skills in thinking and, and socially uh, so that they can go out into the world and be the people that they're destined to be. And we have realised, and we've been speaking about this for a long time, that the, the model of a class teacher from class one all the way through to class eight, whilst that is a great ideal, and it does sometimes work wonderfully well, uh, increasingly we were finding that at around the sort of age of the 11 or 12 year old child, the children were presenting questions for us and, and really demanding something different uh, in, in how they were, how they were experiencing their education and so on. Um, sometimes it was that the class teacher found the teaching of the much younger child more difficult. And so by the time they got to adolescence, then the, the, it worked very well. Other times the class teacher had a great gift and skill at working with younger children. And by the time they got to adolescence, things became more challenging. Uh, and so we decided to change our model, um, to change the structure of our school. So now we have a class teacher from classes one to five. And at class five, the, the class is handed over to the middle school, where there's a team of us as teachers who have specialised in our different subjects. So for example, I teach science uh, lessons to class six, seven and eight. Uh, and so I'm always teaching one of those classes, um, but I'm developing my practice as a teacher in those areas, in that area. From class six, the classes uh, have a class guardian who takes on that pastoral side of it um, and will be that person for them for the three years that they're in the middle part of the high school, classes six to eight, or years seven to nine uh, in, in the sort of main dream, mainstream class numbering system. And at that point, the guardian will look after the pastoral side of the, the class for that time, will engage with parents, host parents' evenings, be involved with the trips and the plays of the class throughout the next three years, and really hold that group in the way that uh, in other Steiner schools a class teacher may do. Um, as well as that, the class teacher is part of a team that teaches different main lesson blocks throughout that time, so that often the class teacher is teaching that group. Um, they're there in the morning to greet them with a, with a look in the eye and a handshake as they come into the classroom uh, and they spend a few minutes, half an hour or so, first part of the morning with, that, with their class guardian, talking about things, uh, doing various different activities sometimes that are, you know, that, that are going on um, in the day or in the week and things like that. Um, so whereas other Stein schools in, this, in, in the UK at the moment, to my knowledge, haven't yet adopted this uh, way of um, teaching in the middle school, uh, many of our colleagues that work in Europe have, and it's quite common in Germany, Denmark, Holland, places like that, for this change to happen. And I really do stand behind the feedback we've got from the students and the parents very strongly is that this model is working fantastically well um, for our students. The high school students will have main lesson blocks. So when they come in in the morning, they spend the beginning of the morning with their guardian for the first little bit of time, and then they will have a main lesson teacher. And the main lesson blocks go for three or four weeks and you, it's an immersive experience into a topic. So at the moment I'm teaching uh, astronomy to class seven and we're learning all about the movement of the stars, we're learning about the different things uh, in the sky that we can see, how the sun works, what the, what's happening with the moon, how the planets are moving and how that, how that uh, works. And underpinning all of that is a narrative story about the, the sort of progression and history of astronomy. So exploring biographies of these different astronomers throughout the um, historical time of, of understanding humans' relationship to the stars and, and the moon and the sun. And through that, we're you know, looking at the key events and key discoveries and shifts in thinking, which to a modern human seem unbelievable that, that anyone could have believed that. But now actually we can look or try and imagine what it would have been like and see the impact of how significant some of these discoveries were at the time. Um, so the students are really immersed in these topics for a period of time, uh, for a period of a few weeks, every day, every morning for an hour and a half. Um, at the beginning of each main lesson block, we give them a handout from the, uh, to each student, which tells them clearly what they're going to learn about, what the, you know, the curriculum content is, um, and we give them an assessment criteria so they can see uh, what, the, what, what pieces of work are going to be assessed and how do they achieve at the various different levels. And when they're in class six, so far my experience has been that, that there are a few students ready for that and throughout the year more and more gradually become ah, oh, I understand now I'm given a piece of work uh, or, some, or an indication about something and I can see how I can achieve these at different levels. 
um, which is really successful. By class seven, they're very much into the habit of, of really understanding that, and it prepares them really well for when they go on to e either GCSE study later on or um, to our NZCSE program, which works in a very similar way. So the big shift that I've found um, as a teacher working in our middle school now as, a, as part of a team of teachers who are teaching this, this age group, um, I'm able to really develop and hone my skills and knowledge, uh, both breadth and depth around the, the, the uh, sciences as, as I'm teaching. That means that uh, this year already resources I used last year, which I can reuse, retailer, change, interpret for the different group that I'm teaching this year, um, are, are becoming much better. Previously, you had to wait eight years before you taught the same content again, um, or the same, the same block again, and that has some positive because it means each time you're teaching it, you're fresh and you're new and you're rediscovering aspects of it. The disadvantage is that it takes a lot of time to do that. You can't necessarily always find resources. And I really feel that, that uh, this, this new, our new approach to teaching in the middle school, um, as a teacher, I can feel, I know how better to, to meet and bring different topics to the different groups as I'm doing that. So what that allows me to do as a teacher, because, because within any class group, you've got those people that, you know, you've got people that absolutely love science and have read lots and come with lots of knowledge. Uh, and for them, uh, they, they can give you challenging questions, which are great because as a teacher that helps you to, to really test your knowledge or to develop your understanding more than you already had. You might be asked a question that you've not even occur or thought of before. And by year on year on year teaching the same areas, you're, um, you're, you're becoming much more knowledgeable about how to answer, to think about, to engage with the students from a broad range. So it's, it's a great gift as a teacher because the students, you, you're obviously giving to the students, but they're giving a lot back to you as someone that loves science. I'm getting to find out more about uh, the topics that I love, which then I can hopefully enthuse and inspire year on year on year as I continue to do the same things. So history is taught sequentially. So my experience of, of being uh, state educated was one week you were learning about the ancient Egyptians, the next week you were learning about James I, and the next week you were learning about World War I. And so consequently, I have no idea what order anything happened in. Uh, our history education teaches sequentially through history up until modern history by the end of class eight. So it, this starts in class five with ancient civilizations, comes through to the Romans in class six, through to the Middle Ages in class seven, and then up to modern history, revolutions and reformations in class eight. And that really grounds our students' history knowledge in this um, this, 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 this timeline effectively picking out biographies and key events across, those, across the, the course of human history. Um, the, our approach to science teaching is uh, really based in the phenomena. So at all points we're trying to give the students an experience first and then from that experience they observe or, 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 or feel or see or, or touch or hear something and then out of that develop the ability to come to some uh, observations around it what, does those, what do those observations mean? Ac accurate looking and seeing can come towards then uh, correcting good description, which then builds to conclusion and thinking about what it is I've seen. And again, giving the experience first uh, without telling this is what you're gonna see or this is what you're gonna hear or this is what you're gonna think um, is, is so open uh, and it really gives the students the chance to come to the conclusions and, and realizations themselves, which is, I think is a great gift. That aim of experience is also done through our English and maths teaching. Uh, English, we have a strong um, emphasis on drama here where class plays are really significant and important. We do book studies and or speech work, poetry recitation and uh, an analysis. Um, throughout this year, we've had a variety of different writing competitions, whether they're journalistic or poetry writing or short story writing. Um, and the students have really, really enjoyed having that, uh, that chance to, you know, to get their pens and pencils going. Um, uh, our games curriculum in, in the classes six to eight is uh, the first time they really start to play competitive team sports. So we have uh, football, um, they do volleyball, things like basketball, those are all uh, some quite big um, core parts of the um, games curriculum, as well as athletics. So we're now in the summer term and the students are doing high jump again or long jump and those different things. I think what is unique to Steiner Waldorf students is their ability to be themselves. I, I think they come out of our education with 
a sense with some knowledge of who they are and a desire to explore that further. And that definitely wasn't how I left school. Um, they, in, as, as I get to see them time and time again, as I've met with ex-students that have left the school and bump into them and ask them how they're doing, the, that ability to understand who they are, how they are, how they learn, what helps them to learn, what they find difficult is an invaluable fundamental life skill that underpins everything really that they go on to then do and to ask questions uh, and their ability to ask questions and to want to know what the answers are and to challenge if they feel that the answers are not right in an erudite and articulate way. I think those are the real, the thing, those are the, I mean, we have, they have many things that are great skills and gifts and, and all those things are wonderful, but the underpinning things are the ability to know themselves and the ability to think and question and challenge. IT is something that's fairly new to us teaching formally uh, at school. It was done um, tentatively in a little bit in one of the higher classes, but the pandemic, in my opinion, I feel very strongly, it necessitated us to really meet what many students had experienced for the first time. So obviously a lot of students were having to engage through online learning and, and for many of them, they'd never really had to access to screens before. We don't use screens. We hadn't used screens at school um, at all uh, in the younger years and, and we still don't. So IT, our IT curriculum starts in class six. And in that, we're, we're giving them an introduction to, um, to, to how to use a computer. What is a computer? start with the physical side of it, we take one apart, look at the different bits, put them back together again, try and understand how they interact with each other, what is the purpose of these, what do they do. Um, so we start with a you know, real physical understanding of it and then we go into introductions to skills like touch typing, um, how to use the basic office, suite, word, spreadsheets, presentations and so on. Uh, we also want, we also have introduced um, ga like making games, so computer aspects of computer programming, um, as they get older, we've, we, we teach them how to do web building, web design. Um, and as they go further on, we essentially continue to hone and develop those skills, um, as well as then installing operating systems onto you know, blank computers, if you like, going through the troubleshooting of how does that actually, how do you fix those things when they don't work quite properly. And uh, further also explore the impact of technology and IT on us as individuals. So how do we develop healthy relationships with these things that are all around us now? Uh, we do talk about themes around addiction to, to these devices and explore how we can just at least be mindful of these um, so that they can, so we can control them and they not control us. What inspires me to be a ward of teacher are the questions I get asked by the students. Uh, I mean, I love science, so going into a classroom and talking about something that I love and I'm interested in um, is great. And doing that in a way where the students are able to, to ask me about what, why, how, those questions are, are what I really love. And being able to craft the education based on my own intuition and insight into both my subject and the students that I teach. So I don't have a book that tells me what I should do in lesson three on week four. I am, I am able and free to craft the lesson, the main lesson block over the period of weeks, as well as each individual lesson for exact, exactly the way that I feel that class needs to then either be challenged by something or develop understanding in something or to experience something. And to have that freedom as a teacher is, is amazing. And the, the way that the students receive that then, they might not necessarily know that, but they get an education that is uniquely crafted to each individual group. And yes, it has the same overarching themes. I'm teaching astronomy. So there's of course going to be things in there that are always taught in the same, or there's content in there that will always be taught and covered, but how that's brought um, is unique to each individual class each year, which is, which is really exciting.